Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Yard of the Month. Yard of the Month is for two to six players, ages eight and up, and about 10 to 60 minutes to play. In the game Yard of the Month, you're attempting to garden, and you want to get 10 flowers before your opponents do. However, they're going to try and stop you by putting weeds into your garden, and evil, evil gnomes like Knack. But luckily, you're going to have Nick, which is going to be able to defend your garden. You're also going to have fertilizer, which will grow your flowers quickly, and you're going to have hammer and garden tools which allow you to do certain things like take additional turns or smash pesky gnomes. On your turn you can play any of the cards you want from your hand and you're going to be able to also draw a card and any card you don't want in your hand at the end of the turn you can go ahead and discard. At the beginning of the turn you're going to draw back up to your hand size of five and continue playing like that. Each player is going to get to take their turn by placing all the things, different things in their garden and the most interesting thing um, about the way the flowers work is you're going to place the cards face down and on your next turn you're going to flip them face up. When the weeds hit the garden then you're going to have some problems because your seeds are going to get destroyed destroyed in every turn you have a weed in your garden or multiple weeds, you're going to lose flowers equal to that number. Now, of course, that is the basic aspect of the game. Putting 10 flowers into your garden is the goal. Let me show you what it looks like. Here's the contents for Yard of the Month, and as you can see, these are all the different types of cards you're going to be getting in the game. You've got this big stack of cards here. You're going to get a box as well as the rule book that tells you how to play the game. It's fairly simple to understand. To set up the game, you're simply going to have this deck of cards here. These will all be shuffled into the deck as well, and every single player is going to get to draw five cards into their hand. You can play up to six players if you would like. Like, and uh, we'll just go ahead and simply start off our demonstration with three here. These are all the different types of cards. We'll go ahead and explain them all. This is a flower that you can put down in your garden face down and on your next turn when you uh, have, have an next turn, if it's still there, you can flip it face up from a seed to a flower. Weeds destroy seeds and also every time you have a weed in your garden at the beginning of your turn, you're going to lose a flower. Fertilizer is going to instantly turn flowers that are seeds into flowers. Nick is going to prevent players from being able to play weeds into your garden and Knack is going to prevent players from playing flowers. This hammer is able to destroy either type of gnome, whether it's your opponent's or your own. And Garden Tools is actually interesting because it can stop weeds by simply countering them, or you can actually go ahead and discard it to uh, play it, take an extra turn, or if it's on your turn and you play it, you can go ahead and get rid of all the weeds in your garden. Players are going to go ahead and simply draw a card to start their turn and begin the game. Let's go ahead and talk about it. So in beginning your turn, you're going to simply start with your five cards and then draw a card. On the rule book, it tells you exactly how to play the game. It's fairly simple. It gives a straight definition of all the different cards, the, the gameplay, as well as the turn order. You're going to remove or discard any flowers from the garden that has weeds in it, and then you're going to drop to your maximum hand size, so you don't draw at the end of your turn, you draw at the beginning. You're going to go ahead and uh, place any number of cards into your hand, and discard any cards you do not want at the end of your turn. So I guess you don't draw a card at the beginning of the turn, I lied, sorry. <laughs> and, and then after that, you're going to simply play cards, and you can play any of the cards you want. Luckily, with this guy's hand, it's really, really nice. You have these two flowers here, which you can go ahead and place face down as... Uh, as seeds. You have this fertilizer which you go ahead and play to unflip them and turn them into flowers. And then of course you've got this guy here, Nick, which is going to protect your garden from, of course, weeds, which are really nasty. This little hammer here can be used on your opponents if you want to keep it, but if you don't, you can go ahead and discard it and then end your turn. Sometimes you're going to want to keep cards in your hand, maybe to protect your garden for next turn, or if you've got stuff like these garden tools here, they can actually prevent weeds from ever hitting your garden in the first place, and the next player will take their turn. That's the idea. Let me show you a couple rounds. So we're back to the board again, and as you can see, everybody's got their five cards. Like I said, you do not draw at the beginning. You draw up to your hand of five cards. So I apologize for that little misstep. And of course, he's got his hand, which I was showing you from before. He's going to take these two flowers here and place them face down into his garden as seeds, using this fertilizer to go ahead and flip these guys face up, protecting the garden with Nick the Gnome. And he can choose to keep this hammer or not. I think he'll go ahead and choose to keep it just in case. The next player is then going to get to look at his hand. His, he's got a Nick, which he'll go ahead and play. He's got a flower here, which he can play. He'll play this fertilizer to flip over the flower and then he's got Knack the Gnome. He'll play that right there. He could also choose to play Weeds as well, being very mean to his opponent. And that is going to start him off in a not good position. Now what he can't do is he couldn't play Knack the Gnome when Nick is here, because he can only have one Gnome in the garden, and he didn't have a hammer to get rid of this guy to play him. He also can't play the Weeds on this guy because Nick is guarding the garden with his life. He will not allow that to happen. So he's going to have to play that. So his hand is empty. The next player is going to look and hopefully he's got a hammer. He doesn't have a hammer. All he has is Weeds, but he can't play it on these guys because they've got Nick the Gnome, and he's got all these flowers he can't play because Knack is in his garden, so his only choice is going to be to go ahead and discard his hand. But don't worry because the game is going to give him plenty of options to uh, come back. Now, his player is going to be his turn now. He's going to get to draw up to his hand size of five and then look at his hand. Now, if he wants, he can go ahead and hammer Nick the Gnome on his opponent's side of the field. He's got two fertilizers. He's got a knack to give this guy. He's got Nick, which he doesn't need, so he'll go ahead and get rid of the rest of the cards in his hand. This player is going to draw five cards here. What has he got here? All right, so this is... Uh, 
place in the gardens, preventing them from growing any flowers. So he can't play these guys. Luckily, he's got this hammer here to get rid of that guy there and allowing himself to play more flowers down. Uh-oh, placing another weed there and fertilizing his garden. Now he's got three. This player is in a lot of trouble here and he's gonna go and draw his hand of five. He's really looking for something that can help him, but he doesn't have anything. He does have a knack though to mess with his opponent and he's got some weeds that he can go ahead and play on this guy as well. If there were any seeds in his garden, it would be they would be removed but there's not, so at the beginning of his turn, if this is still in play, then he's going to lose a flower for each weed in his garden. These aren't going to help him, so he's going to go ahead and discard. And players are going to continue in this way. He's going to go ahead and draw his cards here. He's got a flower to place down. He's got some fertilizer to flip that flower up. He's got a garden tools here that he can choose to use. That's going to give him an extra turn. It would also be able to prevent people from playing weeds on him, but he's got another one, so he'll save that one. But you can only do that once around, so he can't simply choose to take another turn with another one of these garden tools he has here. He's going to go ahead and play two more flowers, and they're going to be as seeds just like that. He'll go ahead and get rid of Nick because he doesn't need that, and he doesn't need this hammer either, but he'll go ahead and keep this garden tools just in case somebody tries to mess with him. And the next player is going to get to go once again, and he's got all these flowers here. He doesn't have that hammer to get rid of Nick the gnome, though, so he's in trouble. So he simply cannot play any cards to help him... Uh, free out of this problem here. But what will happen is this weed is going to actually destroy this flower and it's gonna keep doing that until eventually he can get rid of this weed with garden tools and also smashing that knack the gnome, discarding his hand. The next player is going to get to go. He's got a bunch of cards in his hand. Let's see what he can do. Well, he can simply smash this guy here, but I think he wants to smash his own. That way he can start playing cards in his garden. He's also gonna play Nick there, which is gonna protect him a little bit. And unfortunately, he can't play anything in his garden because he's still got weeds, so he needs to find he needs to find the uh, garden tools to do so so he's going to discard these and the game's going to continue at this point this player is going to get to flip over all of his flowers this is his garden tools he's going to get to keep and he's going to draw up to his hand size of five which he's got four there there's five flowers he's halfway to winning he's got two more to place down he could choose to take another turn with this if he wants place another weeds in somebody else's garden and the idea is to get those 10 flowers once she's able to flip over those 10 flowers before any of his opponents he's going to win the game and everybody else is going to be very sad because of their their misery garden full of weeds. So a couple caveats of play. Remember that whenever you have something guarding your garden, you can simply not be able to play anything uh, that's bad in that person's garden. And Knack will simply not let you play things that are good in the garden. Uh, whenever you've got weeds, you have to discard all the seeds that you had in play. And you also have to discard one flower per per weed that you have in the garden. And in the third player's case, unfortunately here, he had a ton of weeds, so he wasn't able to play any of that stuff. He has to look for those garden tools to basically free himself from that, that really nasty predicament. And of course, it's a take that game. So one player is doing really well, the rest of the players are gonna try and gang up on that player to make them reduce their garden size. Hit those 10, hit that 10 mark in the flowers for the garden, and you're gonna win the game. Okay, I think you got it. Let's go ahead and talk about it. So what do I think about the game Yard of the Month? Well, first of all, as you can see in the, in the way we were playing the game, sometimes players can get really, really screwed over, but also there's a tidal wave that can happen where the entire game can change and somebody else who thought you thought was winning can simply start losing. Now the game says 10 to 60 minutes, so that depends on the amount of players. The more players you add, the more insane it takes to get the game going on. There's a couple ways to change the game. It has some optional rules here that will tell you. Uh, every time the deck is shuffled, all gnomes and players' gardens are removed from the game, or you can alternatively play until someone has five flowers, especially when you're playing with four or more players, and I definitely agree with that because the game can get extremely long. This feels like a really quick filler game, but it actually can take a long time, which is kind of a negative for me. I wanted to actually be able to jump in and play it, make my garden big and be done. And that's the reason is because there's only so many cards in the deck. I think it would kind of help this having more unique cards in the game. Maybe weeds that can only remove certain things or weeds that would move around. Maybe some uh, gnomes you can play as hammers or gnomes. Stuff that you're not really having to search because you have to search and search and search to find the things you need. If this that player needed that garden tool so bad and you can spend three or four turns just pulling and not getting what you need. And it's really, really frustrating. Uh, as a multiplayer game, it can be like that, especially when you're in first place. It's really, really difficult to win because players are constantly trying to stop you from doing so. And I don't blame them either. But at the same time, as the first player, you think you're doing everything right and you're just continually being smashed on. This is definitely a mean take that game. It seems like a cute little uh, flowery happy game, but there is definitely some uh, take that involved. The art's cool. I really like it. I like the feel that it's, I'm a gardener myself and I like the feel of the placing the gardens down 
um, trying to protect her garden. Has this fantasy esque style feel and a little bit of like a creation style tableau management game. It's best at two players in my opinion because it's a lot quicker and it's a lot easier to get what you need, stopping your opponent. Your opponent has this kind of back and forth with you. When you get to three, four, five, six, it starts getting more and more hectic and it starts getting more and more difficult to win. I really want to see more stuff with it. So I'm going to definitely recommend this as a two player game. I really, really enjoyed it as a two player game. It was fun doing that back and forth. But the more and more it started drawing out, the more and more I was wishing that other cards did certain things, different types of flowers. I think that's really needed for the game. Overall, it's it's right there on the cusp of me giving it a recommendation because I really, really enjoy certain aspects of it. Of course, the two player I would recommend simply by itself, but any more than that, it really needs to have some more stuff going on for it, specifically for the length of time the game has. But overall, it is up to you to decide in the description below on Kickstarter Yard of the month. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter card game review. If you like this video, go check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all does help. Also, go ahead and check out the game Yard of the Month. Going to be on Kickstarter in the description below if it's something you're interested in. I remember why I really like the art now, too. This reminds me of Plants vs. Zombies, and I played that game like crazy. And that is what really got me happy about it. A little sunshiny aspect, but one of the games really evil and nasty, kind of like that one. So that kind of what gave me that, that interest in the artwork. Anyway, also go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We have tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We're currently giving away a game on, by AEG called Space Base. It's a really good, fun game. If you like Machi Coral, this is definitely one that's even better, in my opinion. Also, go ahead and check out our friends, everythingboardgames.com, and the Giveaway Geek. They've got tons of blog posts and giveaways and other great reviews. Uh, so you can go ahead and check those if you want. All right, that's all I got for this time. And as always, guys, keep on planting that garden. And I look forward to see you guys next time.